Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Taiwan semiconductor stock by analyzing their financial ratios and dissecting their financial statements so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Taiwan Semiconductor is a Taiwanese company. It focuses on manufacturing and designing semiconductor chips. It is one of Taiwan's largest companies as well as the world's largest semiconductor business. Let's get started with the model. All the numbers on my Excel spreadsheet are converted to US dollars. This is a large cap company, 444 billion market cap. It's a really big company. They're trading at 98.74 a share and they have 4.5 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company, you forecast a future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flows, cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. You can see the company has lots of free cash flow, although it does decrease. It was 8.8 .8 billion in 2017 and 5.8 billion in the trailing 12 months. But that is still a lot of free cash flow to work with. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's a revenue minus expenses. And their net income is 12 billion, way up to 18 billion. Their revenue also grows quite a bit from 34 billion up to 45 billion. And they have really solid net profit margins. Net profit margin is net income divided by revenue. It's how well you convert revenue into profit. And they're 33 to 39% a year. So lots of their revenue goes towards profit. Only 61% went towards expenses in the trailing 12 months. This is the company's income statement and all the numbers are new Taiwan dollar. So if you want to convert it to US dollars, you have to divide by 30. In the trailing 12 months, they had 1.3 trillion and then the cost of revenue was 619 billion. So that's 675 billion of gross profit, which was the highest of all the four years. Their operating expenses were 140 billion. Operating income of 535 billion, which is much more than the prior three years. So they're really growing. They also have to pay interest on their debt and they have other expenses. So their net income was half a trillion. That's up from 350 billion in 2019. This is the company's revenue by location. 60% of their revenue is in North America, 20% in China. Their percent of revenue in North America is decreasing, but on a nominal basis, they have more revenue than they did in 2017. The only major concern I see with this company is the tension between China and the US. I don't think it's gonna affect this business, but you never know with all the craziness going on with COVID. Half of their revenue are semiconductor chips in smartphones, 30% is in computers. I don't see this affecting their business at all. The only thing I see is maybe they do more business in smartphones and less on computers. Although with the big EV craze, you might see their automotive smart chips growing as well. This is this company's statement of cash flows, and you can see their operating cash flow was over half a trillion, and it grew to 766 billion. You should always look at operating cash flow and a statement of cash flows to see how much money the company generates through its operational business. And to calculate free cash flow, it's operating cash flow minus capital expenditures. The company spends quite a bit of money in CapEx due to the nature of the business, but they still have a good amount of free cash flow left over each year. And the company did issue a lot of debt in the trailing 12 months, 282 billion. Let's look at a capital structure, 6.7 billion of debt, 57 billion of equity, and the company's net debt is negative $14 billion. Net debt is debt minus cash on balance sheet. So that means they have more than enough cash on their balance sheet to pay off their entire debt with 14 billion left over. The company spends 1.7% interest on its debt and cost of debt is 1.55%. That's interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate. And only 11% of that capital structure is debt, which means 89% is equity. And the cost of equity is 9%. To calculate cost of equity, we use the capital asset pricing model. And part of the CAPM formula is the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And the stock has a beta below one, so the stock is less volatile than the market. The WAC is 8.3%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 342 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $281 billion. We divide that by 4.5 billion shares. 
and we get a calculated stock price of $63. They're trading at $99, so they're trading at a 58% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street's at $48, so they're saying the stock is even more overvalued. So just because a company is doing well financially doesn't mean the stock is a good value. You have to look at the stock price. As the stock price decreases, the value goes up, and as the stock price increases, the value goes down. This is the stock price the last five years, and you can see it was growing little by little for a few years, but the stock price has really been driven up the past six months. And this company pays a 1.7% dividend yield. The dividend yield has gone down because the stock price has come up. When the stock price was lower a few months ago, the dividend yield was much higher. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and you reinvested the dividends back into this company, you would have $127,000 today. If you did not reinvest the dividends, you'd have $100,000 today. That just shows you how well this company is doing relative to the market. When large semiconductor companies need to outsource because they can't handle the demand, like Intel, which has a $300 billion market cap, they go to companies like Taiwan Semiconductor to make their chips. That's why TSM is the largest semiconductor company in the world, because they can handle any request, even when it comes from a large company like NVIDIA or Intel. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE is 13.8, the median is 14.5. PE is stock price over earnings per share. Calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 25.4, so they're a bit higher than the median and average. The average price of sales is six, the median is 2.3. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. They're at 9.8, so they're also higher than the median and average. The average price to book is 4.6, the median is 2.4. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They're at 7.9, so they're also a lot higher than the median and average in this category as well. When you look at equity, which is assets minus liabilities in a balance sheet, you want to look at tangible equity. That's 56 billion. Intangible assets are goodwill, copyrights, intellectual property. And you can't run your business on intangible assets. They have value only to your business. That's why when you value a company, you should always look at tangible assets. Because if the company has a high percentage of intangible assets, the value of the balance sheet is not worth nearly as much as it indicates. The average interest coverage ratio is 12.3. The median is 3.8. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They're at 114, so they can easily cover their interest payments. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes. The average ROE is 10%, the median is 11%. ROE is net income over equity. They're at 31%, so they provide a great value to the equity holders. Average current ratio is 1.9, the median is 1.3. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 1.4, so they can easily cover their current liabilities with their current assets. Their current assets are 600 billion of cash, 140 billion of receivables and 83 billion of inventory. The trailing 12 month free cash flow is 5.8 billion and they have 7.8 billion working capital. Working capital is assets minus liabilities. So this company is well capitalized in really good shape. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on advanced micro devices, Intel, Marvel, Micron, NVIDIA, NXP, Skyworks, and Texas Instruments. All in the same industry as Taiwan Semiconductor. And if Taiwan has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So even though their PE is worse than the market as a whole, it's better than their competitors. That's why you should always look at ratios against similar companies. Price of sales is a bit worse than average. Price to book is a bit better than average. They're doing fine in current ratio. They have a really good ROE. They're doing better in debt than the average. And they're the largest company of this group. And they also pay a higher dividend than the average, 1.7%. The average is 1%. So to summarize, I do have them trading at a 58% premium because their stock price has come up so much. But if I did this video two, three months ago, the price multiples would have looked so much better. And I would have probably valued a company a lot closer to where they're trading at. But I'm doing the video now, so it does seem like it's overpriced. Also, their ratios and financials look amazing. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.